Hey, and welcome to Need to Make It, I'm Mike. So is your extruder feed tube really causing your print quality to suffer? In this video, we're gonna find out. So stick around. We know that there is friction between the filament and the tube, and these tubes are also constantly moving around and changing shape as well. So it is possible that the extruder is not able to consistently pull or push the filament through the tube, depending on how many bends there are and how tight those bends are as well. Now with these two printers, the bends are getting pretty tight, and lots of people seem to think that those bends could be the source of their problems. So we're gonna do some testing to see if that's true. So for this video, we're gonna be using my Creality K1 and the printer comes with the tube inside of the cable chain. But I know most people seem to have removed it either because it restricts the cable chain movement too much or because they think that it causes the tube to bend too much as it comes into the extruder. Now, before we get into the printer testing, why don't we have a look at what happens when we put the filament through a tube with no bends versus with bends. All right, so here we have our really fancy test setup. So this is the same length of tube that's on the K1 printer, and it's the exact same outside diameter and the same inside diameter as well. This is just PTFE tubing or Teflon tubing. This is not the same as a Bowden style setup. Those tubes actually hug the filament much tighter. And so I have ABS loaded in there right now, but I also have a PLA version and I have a PETG version as well and I've just heated the end and I've created this little loop so that we can hook onto it. And over here, I have all of these little weights and some hooks as well. So what I'd like to do is load this up with weight until it just starts to move and has a continuous movement as well. I don't want it to be going too fast oh, and dropping too go. fast, um, but I'd like to see what the difference is between the different filaments and then what we can do after we do the straight test is start to wind this around and curl it around to see how much more friction there is in the curved tube versus a straight tube. Okay, now what I need to do is swap out this for the curved version. So I'll take these off. And now I have this little guy that I created and this will allow me to feed that tube through there and create the radius that we want. All right, so we have a 50 millimeter diameter. I'm just gonna secure this down and then we can get to the next test. So what I'd like to do now is tighten this up just a little bit more to try and reproduce what would happen in the worst case scenario inside of the printer. Okay, so we have about a 40 millimeter diameter. Let's go ahead and get that same testing done. So with the straight tube, ABS and PETG have very little resistance, but when I tried PLA, it takes twice as much force to pull or push the filament through. Now let's add PETG carbon fiber and also add TPU to our testing as well. PETG carbon fiber is quite stiff, very much like PLA filament, and TPU is the complete opposite, and that really shows in our test results. For the straight tube, we had ABS with 72 grams, PETG with 68, PLA with 123, PETG carbon fiber with 89, and TPU with only 19 grams. For the 50 millimeter diameter spiral, we had ABS with 159, PETG with 127, PLA came in at 238, 
PETG carbon fiber at 231 and TPU at only 37. And for the 40 millimeter diameter spiral, we had ABS with 126, PETG 110, PLA 245, PETG carbon fiber with 230, and TPU with only 36. And the overall averages show TPU with only 31 grams, then PETG with 102, ABS with 119, PETG carbon fiber with 183, and PLA with 202. Now, while we're talking about force, you know what else doesn't take much force? Clicking that subscribe button and liking this video with an average of only 72 grams per click. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell as well. So you always know when a new video is released. So why does the tighter spiral not impact the filament as much as the larger spiral for PETG and for ABS? Now those two filaments as they come off of the spool are fairly flexible. But when we look at PLA, it's far more rigid. The tighter diameter also gives us less curved length to pass through. So we get those more flexible filaments that are able to conform to the shape more easily and the overall resistance is lower. But for PLA, it does not prefer the tightest curve and does not want to conform as easily. And now we can say for certain that it does take more force to pull filament through a tube with a curve. Pushing also seems to take more force as well. However, if we look at how much pushing or retracting we're doing at our direct drive setup on the printer, it's pretty minimal and there is enough leeway inside the tube for retraction before it becomes a problem. And now, since we know that PLA takes more force on average, we're gonna continue the testing at the printer with PLA. So the first test that I ran was my standard setup. I have the tube outside of the cable chain and the tube can kind of move around free without too many restrictions. For the second test, I've run the tube back through the cable chain just like it was for the stock setup for this printer. And for the third test, I've added a 50 millimeter spiral onto the tube just like our testing earlier. And for our fourth test, I've changed the spiral to 40 millimeters, which is about as tight as I can go without having the tube kink on me. Okay, so first up I have painted the samples. I've taken one from each that I thought was best representative. This is what they look like when they are just white. It's really tough to see any defects. So I painted them with a gray primer, which for some reason really does help to highlight any problems. And of course they are numbered as well. So the reason that I chose to print four was because I wanted the maximum amount of retractions and I wanted the most amount of movements as well, just to see if it would impact it at all. I managed to find the section that matches on each of these prints. And if we compare them, I would say that there is no discernible difference between them. So this is number one, two, three, and four. So why doesn't the print quality suffer even with this level of a tight curve that we have set up? Let's run a different kind of test to find out.
I've set up this crane scale above the printer and I've used this electrical tape to secure a double strand of TPU filament to the end of some PLA filament. And then if we extrude, we can see that the gears don't start to skip until around 10 and a half pounds or 4.7 kilograms. Now, even though we tested PLA, which had the most resistance to movement through the tube of any of them, the force required to cause any extrusion problem is far more than the resistance to the filament moving through the tube. In the case of PLA in the 40 millimeter diameter, which required 245 grams to pull through the tube, that works out to 0.54 pounds, or just about 1 20th of the force required to cause the extruder to skip. Now, of course, we don't want to be near the max force, and luckily, we're not anywhere close. We're hovering around 5% or so. So if you're seeing issues with inconsistent extrusion, the cause may be a bad extruder. You're going to need to check to see if you're still running the first generation of extruders for your K1 or K1 Max. Older versions will have a non-magnetic backer plate, and the metal is also going to be quite shiny as well. The new ones are going to have a steel backer plate, and it's got a matte finish. Unless you're running with a completely kinked tube or possibly an even more stiff material than PLA or PETG carbon fiber, one or two or even many tight bends in the tube isn't going to affect your prints. Does it hurt to have a more gradual curve from the spool to the extruder? I don't think it hurts at all. And I'd recommend removing the tube from the cable chain and let the feed tube move with less restriction as well, because if nothing else, it's gonna help reduce the wear on the end of the tube as it comes into the extruder fitting. And I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you, as always, to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making videos like this possible. Take care, everybody, and we will see you on the next one.